Amen. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Are you awake this, this fine evening? It's so good to be in the God's house. Amen. Let us stand. And let us just praise the almighty God. Can you bless his name this afternoon? Hallelujah. Bendito sea. things in store for us. If you would close your eyes and bow your head to the reverence of the Almighty God. And we'll sing this song. Just worship Him. This is your time. Amen. In prisoners' chains with bleeding stripes all inside Let's pray.
Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day of life you've given us, Father, Lord. This opportunity, Father, we can come in your house, Father, Lord, and cast the cares of the world at this side this evening, Father, and, and give all our heart to you this evening, Father, Lord. We, we just thank you and we love you, Father, Lord. And Lord, as we pick up these tithes and these offerings, Father, we Lord, we Lord, we ask that you bless it, Father, multiply it, Father, Lord. Bless the cheerful giver now. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Hey man, you may be seated. There's a visitor we would like to welcome. I believe his name is Brother Bezzy. God bless you, my brother. Let us make him feel welcome. Welcome to the house of the Lord. <laughs> Jesus, what a wonder you are. Je Jesus. Oh. Oh, you are. 
amazing grace how sweet oh the sound that's the again as we welcome our brother Diego. Don't you love him? It's his amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet. Oh, the sound. Oh, Very good evening. Por favor, tome asiento. Would you please take your seats for a moment? Déjeme darle la, la bienvenida a este servicio de oración. I want to give you the welcome to this prayer meeting tonight. Vamos a leer estas peticiones. We are first going to read the petitions tonight. Uh, esta dice el hermano Fidel. Oremos por nuestros hermanos y nuestras hermanas. Por nuestro pastor que salen para Saltillo, México. Let's pray for all the brothers and sisters that are going to be departing for Saltillo, Mexico. Sister Cynthia has an unspoken prayer request. La hermana Cynthia tiene una petición especial. Sister Peggy says, I need healing from a severe back pain and side pain. La hermana Peggy pide oración por un dolor severo en la parte de la espalda de atrás. A customer of mine, Randy Delgado, asked for prayer. Uno de mis clientes, Randy Delgado, pide oración. He has a tumor in his head. Tiene un tumor en la cabeza. And he may need surgery, Brother Milo. Y necesita, or necesita cirugía, pide oración, el hermano Milo. Please keep Brother Samuel Castillo in your prayers. He is in the hospital. Por favor, manten, mantengamos al hermano Castillo, eh, hermano Samuel Castillo, que está en el hospital. I have an unspoken prayer request. Tengo una petición especial. Also, I ask prayer for my client who has been in a lot of pain, Sister Nika. La hermana Nika tiene un cliente que estaba, se encuentra bajo mucho dolor. Son estas peticiones. Yo sé que usted tiene una petición, los que nos están viendo a través del internet, a donde va a llegar este mensaje. I know all of you have a petition tonight and also those that are on internet, you might all have a petition we can bring before the Lord tonight. Vamos a abrir nuestras Biblias en Mateo 21, versículo 13. 
Let's open our Bibles in Matthew 21, verse 13. Mientras llegan y encuentran el versículo, while you're looking for the verse, eh, después de un momento los estaré invitando a los que sientan de pronto pasar aquí al altar y orar aquí. After this, we'll be inviting all those who they would like to come to the altar and pray. You will feel free to do so. O si usted siente su comodidad de orar desde su silla, hágalo ahí. Yeah, or if you feel more comfortable praying there where you're sitting at, you may also do si that. Si usted siente ponerse de pie y hacerlo orar de pie, está bien. Yeah, if you want to stand and pray, however you would feel. Y a donde nos estén viendo como el Señor le guíe. And everyone that is watching us, as the Lord would direct you in your heart. Yo le invito a que nos pongamos de pie para leer la palabra del Señor. We ask you to stand to your feet to honor the word of the God. Son las palabras de nuestro Señor y Salvador. These are the words of our Lord and Mateo 21, 13. Matthew 21, 13. Y les dijo, Escrito está, mi casa, casa de oración será llamada. Mas vosotros la habéis convertido en cueva de ladrones. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Ahí, estando usted de pie, you there standing at your feet at this solo moment. Que medite por unos segundos sobre estas palabras. I would like you to meditate just for a moment upon these words. Jesús dijo, mi casa. He said, my house. Escrito está, mi casa. It is written, my house. Dios tiene una casa. God has a house. Dios tiene una casa. God has a house. Mi casa. My house. La casa de quién de Dios? Whose house? God's house. Mi casa. My house. Será casa de oración. House of prayer it shall be. Ahora, ¿de qué casa está uh, hablando Jesús? What house is Jesus speaking of? De cuatro paredes. Of four walls. ¿En dónde está esa casa? Where is that house? No. No. Ya hemos madurado y sabemos por revelación que no se refiere a una casa literal. We have matured and we know that it's not referring to a literal house. That he's speaking Jesús about. se refería a su casa, a su templo. He was referring to his house, his temple. Mi casa. My house. Póngase su mano y tóquese. Put your hand on your chest and say. Mi casa, dijo say, Jesús. You say, my house. Esa casa. That house. Será llamada casa de oración. Will be house of prayer. Por eso yo quiero que medite en estas palabras. I want you to meditate on Que hoy sea una oportunidad. That it's an opportunity. Dijo el hermano Branham. Brother Branham said. Lo que usted le consagre a Dios. What you consecrate to God. Dios lo llenará. God will fill it. Que hoy sea una oportunidad. Today will be an opportunity. Para que consagremos una vez más esta casa. That we will consecrate once again this house. Que es la house. casa de él. It's his house. Consagremos nuestras manos. Our hands. Consagremos nuestra mente. Consecrate our minds, our Nuestros hands. Nuestros ojos. Consecrate our eyes. Nuestra boca. Our mouth. Nuestros pensamientos. Our thoughts. Nuestros pies. Our feet. Consagremos nuestra casa. Consecrate our nuestra house. Nuestra familia. Our family. Como Dios le guíe. As God would guide you. Yo le invito, por favor. I invite you then. Si usted quiere sentarse, hágalo. If you want to sit, that's fine. Si usted quiere venir aquí, venga, póngase cómodo. If you would cómodo. like to come to the altar, come. El Make Espíritu yourself Santo comfortable. se está moviendo. The Holy Spirit is moving. Mi casa. My house. Casa de oración será llamada. Shall be called the house of prayer. Yo quiero ser su casa de oración. I want to be his house. Yo quiero ser donde él viva. I want to be where he lives. Él vive es en la casa de oración. He lives in the house of prayer. Hoy es un día de oración. Today is a day of prayer. Consagremos su casa. Let's consecrate this house. Vamos a orar. Let us pray. Señor, buenas tardes. Lord, very good evening. Señor, gracias por tu palabra. Thank you for your word, Lord. Son vida nuestra vida, Señor. It is life to our life. Porque escrito está. Because it is written. Mi casa. My house. Qué honor, oh Dios. Oh, what an honor, God. Qué privilegio, Señor. Oh, Lord, what a privilege. El Dios que mora en los cielos y en las alturas. God that dwells upon high in the high places. Un día escogió morar en el corazón del hombre. One day he chose to dwell on the heart of qué man. Qué privilegio, Señor. Oh, what a privilege, Lord. Señor, que hoy nuestra Nuestros cuerpos sean tu casa. That today our bodies would be your house. Es el deseo de nuestra alma. That is the desire of our soul. Consagrar, Señor, nuestros cuerpos. To consecrate our bodies. 
Señor, a la presencia del Dios vivo. To the presence of the living God. Perdona nuestros pecados, Señor. Forgive our sins, Lord. Perdona nuestros pensamientos. Forgive our thoughts. Perdona lo que nuestras manos han hecho. Forgive what our hands have Perdona done. Perdona lo que nuestros pies hacia donde nos llevan, Señor. Forgive our feet where we, we, they have taken us to. Aún, Señor, perdona lo que vemos. Even forgive what we speak. Y lo que hablamos, Señor. And what we speak, Lord. Señor, que tu preciosa sangre, Señor, nos perdone. That your precious blood would forgive us. Señor, y que ahora, Padre, por medio de tu perdón. Now, Father, through your forgiveness. Señor, que toda parte de nuestros cuerpos sean humillados y consagrados a tu presencia. That every part of our body be humbled before your presence. Espíritu Santo, llénanos, Señor. Oh, Holy Spirit, fill us tonight. Que nuestros ojos puedan ver tu gloria. That our eyes can see your glory. Que nuestros oídos puedan oír la voz that our ears can hear the voice de tu espíritu of your spirit que nuestras manos hagan tu voluntad that our hands would do your will que nuestros pies señor obedezcan a tu palabra that our feet would obey your word y que nuestros pensamientos señor estén escondidos en ti that our thoughts would be hidden you espíritu santo muévete señor oh holy spirit move God. derrama amor sobre nuestros corazones shed love upon our hearts que esa miel preciosa señor that precious honey lord caiga sobre bálsamo en cada uno de tus hijos there will be a, a, a medicine that falls upon each one trayendo sanidad bringing healing trayendo paz bringing peace trayendo fuerza bringing strength trayendo Señor la misma vida que estaba en Cristo en nuestros corazones bringing the same life into us that was in Christ Jesus Espíritu Santo comienza a guiarnos Señor oh Holy Spirit begin to guide us Señor nos relajamos en tu presencia we relax ourselves in your presence donde tú puedas hacer tu voluntad en nuestras vidas where Señor where you can do your will in our lives donde tú puedas hablar Conforme a tu palabra en nuestras vidas, Señor. Well, you can speak in our lives according to your word. Tomamos control de todo espíritu inmundo. We take control of every worldly spirit. Que cuando terminemos, Señor, este servicio. That when we finish this service. Esta casa, Señor, sea llena de tu gloria. That this house would be full with your glory. Esta casa sea llena de tu paz. That this house would be filled with your peace. Que tu fuego, Señor, arda una vez más en nuestras vidas. That your fire would once again be on fire in our hearts. El primer amor, Señor, se encienda una vez más. That first love will be ignited again. Que salgamos enamorados, oh and Dios. And we will be in so in love, God. Señor, harías eso por nosotros hoy, Señor. Lord, would you do that for us tonight? Si mi pueblo se humillare. He says if my people would humble sobre themselves. Sobre mi nombre es invocado. And call upon my name. Y se arrepintieren. And And they would repent. Oh, llorar en a mí. Then cry unto me. Yo oiré. And I will hear. Perdonaré sus pecados. I will forgive your sins. Y sanaré su tierra, Señor. And heal your land. Es tu promesa. It's your promise. Gracias, oh Dios. Oh, thank you, Lord. Porque tú oyes la oración. Because you hear the prayer. Satanás no puede cruzar. Satan cannot cross Las oraciones it. de una madre que ora de rodillas. Yeah, cannot cross over the prayers of a mother that Satan falls on no the knees. Satan cannot cross Cuando over. Cuando el pueblo de Dios se humilla. When the people of God humble themselves. El cielo abre sus ojos. The, the heavens open their eyes. Los ángeles están atentos. The angels are attentive. A la administración del pueblo del Señor. To the administration of the people of God. Muévete, Señor. Oh, move, Lord. Muévete, Señor. Move, Lord Jesus. Muévete, Señor. Move, Lord. Muévete. Move. Muévete, Señor. Move, Lord. Muévete. Move, Lord. Tráenos a vida. Bring us to life. Resucítanos, Señor. Resurrect us, Lord. Resucítanos, Señor. Resurrect us, Lord. En tu presencia, Señor. That your presence, Lord. Resucítanos, Señor. Resurrect us. Llena. Fill. Llena nuestra copa. Fill our cup. Llena nuestra copa, Señor. Fill our cup, Lord. La copa de tus hijos. The cup of your children. De tus hijas, Señor. And your daughters. La copa de nuestro pastor, the Señor. The cup of our pastor. La copa de los ministros. The cup of the ministers. De los diáconos, de los síndicos. The deacons, deacons and trustees. De cada uno de tus miembros de tu pueblo, Señor. All the members of your people. Llena la copa, Señor. Fill that cup, Lord. Tu profeta dijo que lo que te consagráramos a ti. Your prophet said what we would consecrate to you. Tú lo llenarías. That you would fill it. Padre, eso es así, dice el Señor, oh, dijo el hermano Lord, Brandon. 
Brother Benham said, that's the say of the Lord. No puede fallar. It cannot fail. Lo creemos, Señor. We believe it, Lord. Por fe ya está hecho. By faith, it's already done. Llena, Señor. Fill, Lord. Llénanos con tu presencia. Fill us with your presence. Que seamos uno. That we would be one. Que seamos uno. Uno, Dios. That we would be one, God. Que no haya nada que se meta en medio nuestro. There would be nothing amongst us. Oh, yo puedo ver las cadenas romperse. I can see the chains being broken. Yo puedo ver las paredes caerse. I can see the walls fall down. Las enfermedades. The sicknesses. Comenzar a huir. Begin to flee. Yo puedo ver las enfermedades comenzar a huir. I can see the sicknesses begin to flee. Gracias, Señor. Thank you, Lord.
Amen. God bless you. At this time, we're going to be watching a, a video of a message by our founding pastor, Brother Tomas Pettis. Um, the message is entitled, Paul a Prisoner. So with that, we've all prayed. We're ready to receive from the Lord now. En esta hora vamos a ver un DVD de nuestro pastor fundador, llamado Prisionero. Paul, Paul a Prisoner. Uh, Paulo Prisionero. Enjoy. God bless Disfrutenlo. you. Disfrutenlo. Dios los bendiga. It is 40 minutes long. Toma 45 minutos. So, uh, we want to open our Bibles, and I hope I pronounce this book right. Sometimes I have a hard time pronouncing some of these words, but Philemon, Philemon, El Libro de Philemon, it's after the book of Titus. And simply going to read the first verse. Amen. How many love the Lord? Amen. Amen. I'd like to touch a little bit tonight on Paul, a prisoner of Christ. And it reads this way, exactly what I said. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Would you all read it with me? Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. What, what a thing to be a, a prisoner. He, he's, he's, he's not a prisoner of just anybody. But he's a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful this evening, Lord, for the opportunity once more to be able to be assembled together. We count it a privilege. We know the times will come when this privilege will be taken away from us. But as long as we have this privilege, it is an honor, Lord, to come together and worship you together. May this be a revelation to your people that someday they'll look for fellowship and they won't be able to find it. They'll look for somebody that just believe the word, they, they won't be able to find it. All you can hear is somebody stepping by your side and shaking their feet, stomping their feet a little bit, you know that their deliverer's holding on. The bell is getting harder every day. It's waxing hot, hotter. It seems like it's getting to degrees of when those Hebrew children were in the fiery furnace. It just keeps getting hotter and hotter. The Lord, in, in spite of all this, we hang on because we have a promise. And it's really not us holding on, Lord, but it's you holding on to us. We pray, Heavenly Father, this evening that you will be with us and just let your Spirit flow through each one of us, Lord. And may we understand that we're not here in church just to pass a few hours. And we're here because we're concerned. We've been convinced. Now we're concerned about our welfare, about the welfare of the people. And Lord, we're here trying, Lord, with everything we have in our power, Lord, to make it. And it takes you, Lord. We understand that. Man can't do it alone. Man is not able to do it. Yes. It takes the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I pray, dear Father, that you will quicken this to us. And be with us, Lord, and help us, Father, along the way. And heal the sick and the afflicted. In Jesus' name, and you may be seated. As you're sitting, turn, turn your Bibles over to the third chapter of the book of the Ephesians. And it also speaks about Paul being a prisoner. And it says this in verse 1, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Now, in uh, the, have the uh, earphones been handed out to Spanish? Yeah. Yes. Yes, all right. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody gets to eat. But 
you know, it's, it's quite a word, a, pri a prisoner of Christ. Now, in some of the letters of Paul, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In other letters, it says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but when he writes this letter to Philemon, he addresses it as Paul, a prisoner of Christ. Yeah. And when he wrote this letter, Paul was in jail. He was in jail and, and he could well understand by his position what the word meant that when he was surrounded by bars, you know, what, how a jail looks. But he could only be free if someone made him free or let him free. <coughs> we have incidents in the Bible where uh, men of God and mostly all men of God have either served in jail at one time or the other. John the Baptist, Paul, Silas, and Peter, and what have you, and John taken to the Isle of Patmos, and uh, they were all there uh, under, in what we would call today federal prisons. But here is a man put in jail because of what he believed. And uh, it, it didn't go very well with a regular trend on what he believed. Uh, the regular trend there was the Orthodox religion, and it was the turning of the corner of the dispensation, but it was very hard uh, for them to see it, and uh, the high priest, they, they thought that this group of people called Christians were a cult. So Paul being one of them was very a very persecuted man, very persecuted by religion and federal government under Roman rule, we understand that. But here we find Paul in such a such a predicament in a, in a, in a prison, and he's saying a prisoner of Christ. Now, I don't believe and you know, you know why I say that, that I don't believe that Paul was addressing this letter to Philemon about his present condition. His present condition was that he was in jail. He wasn't referring to that, Man. but I believe he was referring to his being, his spirit, his will being a prisoner to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, let me just, before I get started, how many of you would love, like to be a prisoner of Jesus Christ? Amen. Don't be so hasty in raising your hands. <laughs> it's not easy to be a prisoner, to be behind bars. But like I said, I, I do not believe that here what he says, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, he's referring to his physical being, but he's referring to his will. First of all, to get started, we, we understand that as men and women, we are under free moral agency. And it has to be that way for you to choose whether you want to serve or you don't want to serve. Whether you want to follow death or you want to follow life. And it has to be upon the same basis that he placed Adam and Eve. And if it isn't on those bases, well, then God isn't just. But God, being just, He places you and I under free, free moral agency. And I want you to hold that word because later this passage of Scripture might confuse you a little bit. It confuses and dumbfounds theologians, such as, such as to free moral agency. Well, in free moral agency, you have a choice. But uh, we'll find out later what choice Paul had when he became a prisoner. Amen. And it, it gets quite tremendous when you, when you read this. Now, right and wrong is set before us, just like I said, Adam and Eve. And uh, the whole human race was under what we call the penalty of death. We, we were... We were condemned to die. We, we had no way out. 
But God came down in the form of a man to take away that sting of death and place under free moral agency. He placed under free moral agency for you and I to make a decision. Now, decision uh, is decisions are hard to make. We, we, we stand like in the valley of decisions and man, we get up in the morning, we have to decide whether we're going to put on our socks or we're not. That's why you see a lot of people that don't wear socks. They don't want to put them on. Okay. Hey, you got to you gotta decide whether you're going to wash your face and comb your hair. That's why you find a lot of people never comb their hair. They decide not to comb their hair. Then you're going to decide whether you're going to eat breakfast or you're not. Then you got every minute that passes by, there are decisions to be made. It's time for church. We have to decide whether we want to go to church or we don't want to go to church. Right? You have you have a right to choose. Yes. You don't have to come to church. Right. People say you should be in church. You don't have to go to church. You're a free moral agent. You can stay home and watch I Love Lucy. <laughs> but we choose to be here. We we are. I believe we're all here because we wanted to be here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, that's under a free moral agency. Yeah. And you choose to serve God. <coughs> you choose to serve God. You you know that the, the church world knows. No matter what church they go to, that anyone that is called Christian knows that Jesus Christ died on the cross. Is that right or is that wrong? Yeah. Anyone that is called a Christian knows that Jesus Christ died on the cross. Yeah. Now they have to decide if they're going to follow him. They have to decide what church they're going to go to. They have to make a decision what they're going to believe. Amen? Yeah. You have to decide. It's a decision. And nobody can make for you. you got to make it by yourself. You can bring your children to church, but when they grow old or get older, they'll go if they want to. And usually they don't have a new birth, they ain't going to go to church. They're going to go out into the world. No matter how much you bring them to church, you got to get that new birth. Amen. But we find out that each one of us must choose. We must choose death or life. Do you know that life or, or uh, and death uh, and our lives, our lives are just a shadow. And you know what brings a shadow is a certain degree of darkness and a certain degree of light. Man. That's what creates a shadow. So we walk in the belly of the shadow of death. But the real life, we, we see what is called cosmo light. This, this cosmos, we, we, we have access to the cosmos light. But, but there, there, there's another light which is God's light that is not, that's not cosmos, that's Zoe. And we've heard that over and over. Now, when that light is present, darkness flees. There, there's, no, there's no darkness that can stand there. There's no darkness can stand there. When it, in cosmos, you can bring a shadow. It creates a shadow through different things and a certain degree of darkness with light creates a shadow. But you can be sound asleep and you can wake up in the middle of the night and if you happen to see the light of God, you see Zoe. It, 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 it has no boundaries as far as darkness. It makes darkness roll away. And that's something great. Have you ever seen a light? I have. Many people have. Some never see light. But I've seen, I've seen a light. And the greatest light I've seen is the light that has struck my heart. Now, your life, my life, your life will prove what side you're on. It will prove what side you're on. Now, the reason I, I make these statements is to maybe amplify a little bit on the condition of the Apostle Paul. <coughs> now, Paul, uh, as far as being a Christian, he was not a Christian. Paul was a Jew, 
but hadn't come to Christianity. He hadn't seen this thing about Christianity. Yet Paul believed there was a God. He, he, he served God. He waited. Yes. You understand? Catch all this. Amen. He served God his way. He was a very trained man. He was a scholar. But the life that he had proved what side he was on. Paul had never come in contact with the light. Paul had gone to, to school from the age of 8 years old to the age of 35. He had studied under great men like Gamaliel. He was a great man. He was a God-fearing man, but he hadn't seen the light. He didn't know anything about Jesus. All he knew that there was a sect called Christians that followed a man that was here on earth called Jesus. That's all he knew. So the life that he, that he had showed what side he was on. He was on the side of Gamaliel and the Sanhedrin. That was Paul on the road, most of the New Testament, the letters. But in, in seeing this, you think I'm stuttering, but there's a reason for it. I'm reserving a little bit here. But in studying this life of Paul and how he was a prisoner is something to behold. As Christians, we, we sometimes judge our lives by how much power we seem to possess or by how many miracles can be done in our ministry or by how much knowledge we have of the Word. So you, you find, you, you find Theologians throughout the country, the Bible bookstores are full of books on commentaries by different men. In their viewpoint of how they think things should be run. They have their school. They have their thought. They have their idea. They have their theology on how things should be run. And everybody gives you their opinion on how things should be run. Paul was trained under that, on how things should be run. Paul was a very ambitious man. Aside from being a very smart and an intelligent person, trained under Gamaliel, Paul was a man that had ambitions. And one of the ambitions that he had was to someday be a priest and someday maybe be the high priest. That was his ambition. So Paul had favor with the Sanhedrin. He found favor with the clergy of his day. But his life proved what side he was on. And at that age, when he had studied and he was under this clergy, he was a very well-trusted man. And that's the reason that they gave Paul the power and documents to go to Damascus. And you read it in the Bible how he went to Damascus. And he went to Damascus, he went because he was given authority to bind, to bring back to Jerusalem these little groups called Christians. Bring them back. So Paul went to Damascus and not only that but he was also given the authority to kill anyone that resisted him. He had authority to kill. So Paul, he thought he was doing God a service. He was trained. He believed in God. He chose to follow God. But there's one thing that Paul had never encountered. He had never encountered that pillar of fire. He knew nothing about Christianity. He knew about God as far as the Hebrew law had taught him. 
As far as the Hebrew, he said, I am a Hebrew of Hebrews, Amen. born of the tribe of Benjamin, circumcised the eighth day. He knew the law. He was a zealous man. But the time came when Paul, going and thinking he was doing God a service, he takes, he gets on his, on his horse and he goes with his man and he goes toward Damascus. But he's to, to his surprise, that as he was nearing Damascus, suddenly, not, not a shadow, no, sir. not a cosmic light, Amen. but a light from heaven, the pillar of fire Amen. came around him and says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Lord, who art thou? He said, I am Jesus. Ah. Whom thou persecutest. You know what Jesus did to him? You want to be a prisoner of Jesus Christ? <laughs> you know what Jesus did to him? He blinded him. Yes. He put his eyes out. Yeah, the Jesus we serve put his eyes out. And said, Paul or Saul. He said, You are to go to a street called Straight. I got a straight job. <laughs> you got to let a prophet come in and know your eyes. Yeah, my, my, my. Yeah. Paul, when he was there, how the Holy Spirit came upon him and I as a prophet, he came and anointed him. And we find that as he anointed Paul, that Paul's, Paul's eyes were open to something that he had never seen before. Right. He knew about God to a degree. To a certain degree. You could touch him concerning the law. You, you look at his books and read his books on, to the Romans, the Corinthians, Thessalonians, Hebrews. And I say Hebrew because there are some theologians who don't think that he wrote the book of Hebrews, but I believe he wrote the book of Hebrews. And so on and so on. He wrote letters. Most of them dictated by a man, or he would dictate them, they would write for him. But he would write these letters. And Paul, how he expounds the, 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 the Hebrew law, and he, he, he says, zealous concerning the law? He said, no one was more zealous than I was. So Paul was a tremendous, tremendous man. And I find, I find an interesting thing here that, that uh, and I could attribute to my life as far as religion. We, we're all born with religion, one form or the other. We all come from different backgrounds, whether Catholic, Presbyterian, Protestant, whatever. And we come and we, we know what our fathers taught us. We, we, we love God because we, we, we learn there is a God. And we learn to love him to a certain degree. But as far as really being apprehended, a lot of people haven't been apprehended by this thing. Right. So they remain religious. Mm. But Paul was apprehended. Yes. And when he his eyes were open, I believe it, that Paul attended a lot of the services of a man called Peter. And he would sit there and hear him. And he says, this is tremendous. The way he places this. Why, Gamaliel never placed it like this. <laughs> well, Gamaliel knew nothing about this. Because this was the start of Christianity. Yes. And the old orthodox uh, ways, the religion, it didn't show this. It, 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 it pointed as a type to a deliverer. But when the deliverer came, Israel never knew him. Israel never accepted him. Just a handful, the Bible says, about 120. But they began to grow. They began to grow, and that's what frightened the Jewish people, the Sanhedrin, the, the priests and everything, that they uh, had to put a stop to all of this. But here we find Paul. He said, this is tremendous. Till one day Paul couldn't take it no more. And he says, I've got to find out for myself all these things. Why? Why he intercepted? Why God did not 
permit me to fulfill my ambition. You know what ambition is? It means a desire to have honor or power or position such as in a career. It's a desire. That's from Webster's. And in this, he went to the desert. We believe he went to the desert of Arabia. Man. He studied for three and a half years. And one day he said, I, I come to the visions and the revelations of the Lord Jesus Christ. And how the Lord comes to him in such a way that the ambition that was in him and let's face it we all have ambition to do things how many have ambition because yeah. there's people without ambition some people have no motives no objective in life why they're alive why they're here i'm a christian i'm supposed to go to church and walk a bench it's all they know about god is war ventures amen can say amen. Wow. That's the truth. Wow. No ambition. But this man had ambition. That's why he went to Damascus. Man. But when that light hit him, it changed Paul or Saul, which his name was given then from Saul to Paul. And the Lord says, I'll show you how much you have to suffer. Mama. For my name's sake. You will suffer for my name's sake. <coughs> it's easy. I tell people, it's easy to go to church. You don't have to go to church. It's easy to pay tithes. It's easy to give your offering. It's hard when you come across this line and something more is demanded of you. You, you have, you, you, you hear young people especially, especially, well, I'm going to go to school, I'm going to be a teacher, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a musician, I'm going to be a great salesman, I'm going to be this or that. Well, that's their ambition. That's what their ambitions drive them to. And our ambitions my, my, I had ambitions. There was things I wanted to do. You know, there, there are many, many times to be a pastor is not easy. There's many, many times you, you feel like going away from it. You feel, you feel like getting away from it all. Because it's hard, very hard to minister and not just minister but mainly to be a pastor. I've been a pastor almost 27 years and it ain't getting no easier. But there's one thing, experience. And with the Lord, it helps us along the way to be able to cope with the situation. So it's not easy. So then, would it be easy for, for, for a man like me just to Forget about it and go get my barber tools, work eight hours like you do, and go home and take it easy. It would be easy. Very easy. People work eight hours and they go, oh, I'm so tired. Try and hit it for 24. See how tired you are. For you can't sleep. For the whole burden of the church and people is upon you. And it gets hard. But how can a man do that? Is the question. How can a man do that except he be a prisoner? Amen. And, and, and here is where I begin to see this portion of scripture that, that I look at it and uh, I see Paul being a prisoner. He's not talking about being in a, in a little jail, which he was. But he's not speaking about that. He was a prisoner to his will. He had a will. He had an ambition. He had in him something that he wanted to excel. He wanted to be a priest and maybe a high priest. When Jesus comes across him, you understand me? Jesus comes and the light comes. Ask you a question. 
Was he a free moral agent when Jesus called him? Wow. Think about it before you answer. Was he a free moral agent? Could he choose? No. God knew that he had already chosen to serve God. Amen. Point number one. Amen. Point number two is that God knew that Paul, even though he was intelligent, didn't know how to serve God. So God apprehended him. He arrested him. Man. That's why he said in the book of Philippians, for which I have been apprehended or arrested. He wasn't free moral agency no more. My, my, my. It was God showing mercy to a man called Paul. And in his mercy, he places a yoke on him and fetters. And he was chained where Paul could not no more do his will. But it was the will of God that he had to do. God led Paul. He led him with a harness and pulled him so that he could go to the Gentiles. My, my, my. Do you think that a Jew would go to a Gentile? Paul, he really want to go to the Gentiles. He said, I've never eaten anything that's, that's, that's uh, filthy, common, nothing of this. I'm never in these things. But what did the Lord tell him? But God is clean, let no man call unclean. Man. Jew, Jews didn't associate with Gentiles. They're called dogs. But here, Peter had to be given a vision and then the same vision was given, that was given to the, the tenor, it was the same thing that Peter understood that God had opened the way for the Gentile. But the Gentile still was left without knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man. So God had to arrest every hand of them that loved God but didn't know how to serve Him. My and unless God hold of Him, because let me tell you one thing. You think it's man seeking for God? Never does a man seek for God. It's God seeking men. Yes. Adam, Adam, where are thou? Yeah. As far as choosing to go to church and serving God, sure a man under that free moral agency does that. But when you're apprehended by the Lord Jesus Christ, where you're taken from your comfort zone, you have a comfort zone. Yes. And you don't want to move from this comfort zone because it's easy to go with a trend and be in a comfort zone. But when God ruffles those feathers of that nest, wow. makes you move. Yes. And why do you do it? Because he's got chains on you. Yes. Chains of love. You love him so much that you just want to keep on keeping on. Yes. When things get hard in the church, when things get unbearable in the church, when you see men and women pretending to be Christians, living the life they live and whatever, and it gets so hard, sure, you feel like running away. But a true shepherd won't run. The hiding will run. But what makes you stand? Because you have so much knowledge? No, sir. Because you are a prisoner. You have become a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he places a yoke upon you. And he says, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. And sometimes I wonder. Because the load sometimes, it ain't light. But I know the word is light. So I have to go back and put this carnal man to the side and say, it's not you, son. It's Jesus. Notice another point there. Was Paul persecuting Jesus literally? When I say literally, I mean this. Was Jesus Christ in corporal form? Then who was Paul persecuting? He was persecuting his church. The body of believers. And Jesus said, that's enough. Don't you touch him. That's enough. 
You're not supposed to persecute these people. My name is in these people. You're persecuting me, Paul, when you touch these people. It is I. It is I. Nobody else. And when we see, see that, and we see the road, and the troubles that we have on the road, and everything else, we know it's got to be Jesus. And how many of you would love to just have those chains of love placed upon you? But here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. You've got to go or you don't want to go. Did you hear me? You've got to go or you don't want to go. You've got to do something, but you don't want to do it. You've got to say things sometimes that you don't want to say. And when the people throw at you, it's not you that are throwing at you. It's Jesus. It hasn't changed since the days of God. It remains the same. Amen. Amen. What, what a, a tremendous thing that that he just addresses this Paul a prisoner of Christ a man a prisoner a prisoner that is bound in chains of love he loved Jesus so much when he got the revelation of what it was that his chains did mean nothing why did God change him? What if God took his chains away from you? Do you think that you would go back to your ambition? Fulfill your ambition, right? Uh -huh. So it becomes not no more. When the musicians come, short message. Just a little thought. What would it be tremendous to know that he loves us. How much do you love him? How much do you fight against him? Would you stand to your feet? How much do we fight? How much squawking do we do? If he told you right now, go to a certain place, for I have a word for you to do. Would you go? And if you won't go, it just shows that you are not yet a prisoner of Christ. People ask me at times, why do you go to different places? I have to. Why do you do this? I have to. Do you have to do it? Yes, I have to do it. No, you're a free for all agent, Brother Ben. Oh, no. I used to be a free for all agent.
Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Amen. What a beautiful message. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Tommy. Can we give another one to the Lord Jesus? Amen. Let's sing that song, Brother William. I love you, Lord. How many love the Lord tonight? Can you raise your hands to him? And sometimes we say or we hear people say, I don't have nothing to pray for or to pray about. You can always pray for your pastor. Amen. You love him. If you love him, you love to worship him. Would you raise your hands to him? If you have a voice, would you sing it to him? Oh, I love you, Lord.
lluvia derrama de tu espíritu enciende hoy tu fuego sana mis heridas restaurame
How many want to be free tonight? Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, it's been a privilege to be in God's house to see you. Amen? Sing that song, Brother Will. Donde está el Espíritu de Dios? Hay libertad. Amen? How many are free tonight? Because he binds us in chains of love. Porque si te amarra con cadenas de amor. And he makes us free. Y te hace libre. It's a paradox. Es una paradoja. How many are glad to be bound and free tonight? Cuántos están contentos de estar atados y libres. Bound by his dear love that he's given to us. Amarrados por sus cadenas de amor. Amen. Thank you, brother Tommy, for Gracias, the word tonight. Gracias, hermano Tomás, por esas palabras. That's our founding pastor. Por nuestro pastor fundador. That is the lineage that I come from. Esa es la línea de la cual yo vengo. I thank the Lord for the teaching that he has brought to us. Y le damos gracias al Señor por la enseñanza que nos trajo hoy. Amen, I love him tonight. Yo le amo esta noche. Amen, we're going to be going home at this time. Ya nos vamos a ir a casa. But as we do, we just, uh, well, first of all, we, we have a note from Brother Jimmy. Pero mientras tanto tengo una nota aquí del hermano Jimmy. Uh, Sister Anna had been very sick. La hermana Anna ha estado muy enferma. She and Brother Jimmy says, "Thank you all for your prayers." Y el hermano Jimmy dice, "Muchísimas gracias por todas sus oraciones." Anna is doing much better. Anna se siente mucho mejor. She will be going home tomorrow. Ella regresará a casa mañana. Amen. God, thank the Lord Amen. for that tonight. Damos gracias al Señor por eso. 
also we do want to remember our pastor and his wife. También queremos que por favor recuerden al pastor y a su esposa. Brother Tommy Jr. and his wife. Al hermano Tomasito Jr. y su esposa. Brother Jimmy and his wife. Al hermano Jimmy y su esposa. Brother Ben and his wife. Al hermano Benjamín y su esposa. Brother Abraham uh, Guerra and his wife. Al hermano Benjamín, hermano Abraham Guerra y su esposa. Brother William and his wife. El hermano William y su esposa. As they will be going to Saltillo to the to the meetings there. Estará viajando a Saltillo a las reuniones allá. The Lord Jesus would keep their hand upon them as Que el Señor travel. Jesús mantenga su mano sobre ellos. Is that, is that all the ones that are going, brother, brother Caleb? Amen. Uh, so let's let's remember them in prayer as they go as they go to take the gospel. Por favor, mantengamos en la oración mientras ellos van y llevan el evangelio. And I don't believe that there are any other announcements. No creo que sea más. Um, with that, let's bow our heads. Con eso le invito a que incline su rostro. Heavenly Father, Padre Celestial, we're thankful so much tonight, Lord. Muchísimas gracias esta noche. That you've given us this time. Por darnos este tiempo. It's a privilege, Lord. Es un privilegio. So often we take it for granted. A veces simplemente lo tomamos, Señor de Valde. This privilege that you've given us that we can gather together. El privilegio de poder juntarnos juntos. But it is a privilege, Lord. Pero es un privilegio. Because you said wherever two or three are gathered in my name. Porque tú dices que donde dos o tres se junten en mi nombre. That you are in the midst, Father. Tú estarás ahí en el medio, Padre. We thank you this time for this for this time that you've given us. Y te damos gracias por el tiempo que nos das. This time of prayer. Por este tiempo de oración. We're able to reach and cry unto you tonight, Lord. De ser una oportunidad para encararnos, Señor, y animarnos en ti. Father, for the word that we received tonight. Por la palabra que hemos recibido hoy. Father, as, as we're going at this time, Mientras salimos, Señor, en esta hora, Lord, as our pastor and all those that will be accompanying nuestro pastor y todas sus parejas, Lord, may it be a great blessing to the people of Saltillo. Que sea una gran bendición al pueblo en Saltillo. The dedication of their church, Lord God. A la dedicación de ese de la iglesia ya. May there be an outpouring amongst them, Father. Señor, que sea más abundante derramación allá, Señor. A true genuine blessing from you, Lord Jesus. Una bendición genuina de parte tuya, Señor. We love you with all our hearts. Te amamos con todo nuestro corazón. We ask that you go with each one now. Te pedimos que vayas con cada uno ahora. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. En el nombre del Señor Jesucristo. Amen. 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 May God bless you. Dios le bendiga. Let me walk, blessed Lord, in the way thou hast gone.